it's uh well it's hard to even know where to start with news like this you know yeah liam payne gone just like that at 31 i yeah. mean for a lot of us well i know for me it's been rough i remember when what makes you beautiful first came out oh absolutely like it was huge this whole new era of boy bands and one direction they were it leading the charge for sure and i know for a lot of you listening this whole thing this deep dive it's a tough one but we're here to you know try to understand it together at least what we know so far right break it down exactly and maybe just maybe we can celebrate a bit of what he left us with you know his music his energy absolutely gone too soon way too soon okay so from what we know mm -hmm. liam was in buenos aires argentina right and he fell from the third floor of his hotel just awful yeah, tragic awful situation and initially there was a call made to the authorities some reports mentioned an aggressive individual, maybe someone under the influence of something. Uh. But the details, they're fuzzy. Yeah, and that's where things get really complicated, right? Like, who made that call? Was it Liam himself? Was it someone else in the hotel? Someone with him? I mean, that completely changes how we understand what happened. Totally. And then the discovery of Liam's body in the courtyard, that just solidified everything. Ugh, it's just heartbreaking and what makes it even harder is that the events leading up to the fall they're just unclear we're stuck with these fragments these bits and pieces trying to make sense of it all yeah it's that lack of closure you know exact it's tough and of course the investigations are still ongoing they are and this is where you know we all have to think critically what are the possibilities here could this have been a horrible accident you know a misstep on a balcony or well or something else we just don't know yet. Right. And, you know, when authorities look into these kinds of falls, there are just so many factors. Was there anything on the balcony railing, anything inside the room that could, you know, point to what happened? These are the things investigators will be looking at. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, it's it's tough to even speculate at this point. We have to be careful about jumping to conclusions. I'm so sure. But maybe, and I think this is important, maybe we shift gears a bit. Yeah. Talk about his legacy. Yeah. Because Liam's impact on music it's massive. One Direction wasn't just a band. It was a whole phenomenon. Do you remember when they broke that U.S. single week album sales record? Oh, how could I forget? And I think what's really interesting about them is how their music, it resonated across borders. This wasn't just a British thing or an American thing. It was global. And I think the outpouring of grief we're seeing right now all around the world, that speaks to that. It really does. The tributes, the memories fans are sharing online, in person. Mm -hmm. It shows you the impact Liam had on people. And even beyond One Direction, his solo work was really starting to take off. His songwriting, especially on tracks like, you know, Drip That Down, it showed a real vulnerability, a depth that people connected with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard to celebrate that right now amidst all of this. But it's there. It is. And it's a reminder, in a way, of the power of music. It connects us, even in times of grief. It does. For anyone out there who's hurting right now, we're with you. We feel you. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe this whole situation, as awful as it is, maybe it can be a starting point for a bigger conversation about how we as a culture, how we can better support young artists, especially when they're facing so much pressure, you know? It's true. How do we make sure they're doing okay? Personally, professionally, all of it. I think those are questions worth asking. Yeah, they really are. Bye.